Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. We are your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus and Ushamut Zide Pinkavichin. We've been mastering secrets of organ playing for more than 20 years and sharing them on this blog since 2011. On this show, which we create from our home in Vilnius, Lithuania, we strive to help you grow in every area of organ playing, including practice, technique, repertoire, sight reading, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory, harmony, and many others. Our hope is to help you become a complete musician, or what we call as total organist, a program which we have created to help you reach your dreams faster than you would do on your own. If you are new here, we invite you to subscribe to receive free updates of this blog at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video on how to master any organ composition and 10-day organ playing mini chords. And now let's go to the podcast for today. Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Usha. Let's start episode 299 of Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This question was sent by John. And he writes, Hi Vidas and Usha, how are you both? Thank you for your amazing blogs lately. Lately. There has been some great discussions and I value the different perspectives you both bring. I'm wondering if you could please talk about how to improve finger accuracy, especially with fast passages. Specifically, I'm trying to play in Dulce Jubilo, BWV 729 by Bach. Your training videos were great and I surprised myself how fast I'm able to learn it for me. It still took two months. Now my problem is trying to speed up to concert tempo. Most pro- professional organists on YouTube seem to play this piece in uh, uh, 240 or 250 minutes. Your Christmas concert video shows you played in about this time. I seem to be able to play it in about 310 minutes. Quite okay without mistakes, but when I go faster, I seem to slur lots of notes by brushing brushing against the key alongside, for example, playing the note A, I might bump the G sharp alongside. It feels like my fingers fumble and I make mistakes in random places, places and even lose my place completely. This makes me feel quite uneasy and I don't have any confidence that I can get through the piece without messing it up. So I need to go about uh, 10 to 20% faster and it seems a big jump in difficulty. I've noticed I struggle with fast pieces in general. Is it normal to take a long time to increase the tempo after having learned a new piece? What exercises should I do to be able to play fast tempo pieces? accurately. Uh, I want to play this piece as the postlude for the nine lessons and carol service on December 16th, so I still have time, but this will be a big occasion with lots of people and the former retired organist will be there, so I don't want to stuff it up. I hope your day goes well. Take care. God bless. John. That's a nice message. Yes, that's a very nice message as John always writes to us. Well, let's try to help him. Okay, in Dulce Jubilo, uh, the most characteristic thing is probably passages in the upper part. Sometimes they, they run in soprano, but sometimes they go between the, the both hands. And uh, Bach learned uh, this technique, presumably, uh, from visiting Buxtehude in Lübeck. Yes. I think um, the main difficulty with those passages is three sharps, of course. It's in A major piece. So what we could suggest for John, if he has a possibility to practice new skills. Right. I would work on skills in A major. A major, probably in related keys as well, because yes. Bach has modulations. In D major, probably E major. F sharp minor. F sharp minor, yes. That's a parallel key. And C sharp minor, maybe? 
true. In general, I think you know playing playing skills. It's it's important to know technique to develop, and it helps a lot when playing repertoire. B minor too, because it has two two sharps. So playing scales and arpeggios too, because this th- these passages have arpeggiated figures as well. Maybe we could suggest to John to isolate one passage and look how it is put together and maybe transpose it to different keys. The, the only passage, nothing more, just the passage. Would that work? Well, that might work. But in general, I think he needs to strengthen his you know, finger muscles. Oh, so Hanon exercise. Yes, Hanon exercise would be another mm-hmm. you know, source to look at and to, to work on. But, you know, overall, I think that you don't have to to look at the other performers and compare your tempo with, you know, with another's. Mm-hmm. Because the most important thing that you wouldn't take too fast tempo. You need to take tempo as fast as you can still control everything. Because otherwise, you know, that 310, it's okay for now. Maybe you will speed it up a little bit, but, you know, don't rush. And maybe... When John comes back to this piece, maybe a couple years later, he can play without any trouble in less than three minutes. That's right. So, you know, I think listeners will, you know, forgive you if you will not play very fast. But we will not forgive you if, you know, we'll mess up Mm -hmm. everything, even if you play it fast. One or two mistakes is okay, obviously, but, you know, in things like that, uh, we tend to get scared of mistakes, and one mistake leads to another, and uh, another to another, and uh, pretty soon we panic. That's right, and no, for listeners, it's so uncomfortable to listen to to such a performance because you know you know that you are not guilty of something but you feel that way Mm -hmm. you feel sorry for that that's right and uh, sort of helpless because you can't jump in and play for it so I always think you know that you need to take a tempo in which you can control situation because otherwise you know things might just get out of your control Mm -hmm. you're right so, probably the most beneficial would be part one and part two Hanon exercises. If he could stack up maybe 10 to 20 exercises in a row, maybe not necessarily learning them, uh, all of them together, but maybe one day he would learn number one, and then repeat a few days after a while, he would add number two, so then he, he would have two exercises in his repertoire, then three, four, five, and, um, I don't know, in three months he could have maybe entire first part ready to to play in a medium tempo, and then his hands get tired, his fingers would get tired too, but sooner or later they would be stronger. That's right, and you know, it's very good to, to practice on the piano too. Mm-hmm. Because in order you know, to improve your technique, you, you need to practice mechanical instruments, either mechanical organ or you know, mechanical piano. Because electronic keyboard does, does not give you know, for you enough for your fingers to work on. Resistance. Yes. Uh, some very new keyboards, they have this artificial resistance, which is similar to real organ, but but not many people play them. True. So I guess um, I could also recommend playing on the table, just mechanically lifting and hitting the, the table with fingers, those exercises. Because it's 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 a pain to to listen to them, right? For the family, for mm. example, they're very unmusical, um, unmusical and boring. Unless he takes different uh, modes and adds some sharps in there, not only only in C major. That's right. 
Okay, guys. Um, please send us more of your questions. We love helping you grow. This was with us. And Usha. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen. This blog is supported by Total Organist, the most comprehensive organ training program online where you will find courses for every area of organ playing, including technique, practice, sight reading, repertoire playing, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory and harmony, with hundreds of scores and thousands of exercises. Here is what some of the students are saying. Hugh writes, the sight reading course has helped me tremendously. Thank you very much for your essays, courses and all your help. Robert writes, I found the fingerings, registration ideas and general comments to be excellent. John writes, I have found your download very helpful. It was really excellent. I have watched some of your teaching videos and when I read your instructions. I try to imagine you are there teaching me. You may feel disappointed that I am two three days behind, but I am a slow learner and I have committed to taking the time to get it right as you say. But the other night my wife commented that she had never heard me play such a detailed melody in the left hand so well. My left hand is generally poor. Robert writes, It has been a great pleasure in my life of having discovered your courses and material as well as the YouTube work of recordings. You have a calm and pleasant way of teaching. Ron writes, Hi Vides and Osha, thank you guys. What a wonderful response to my email note to you. You've got me right, and I feel you understand my level of playing. Yes, at home and lucky that I have an organ for that reason. I am paying attention to this, and I am going to try this haha no longer secret model. Yes, and I love Caesar Frank too. What is very nice about your blog podcast is that Osha and Vidas are like a Socratic dialogue, and by bouncing things off of each other, so much more information comes out and is expressed. Your comments contain a wealth of information and understanding. I really appreciate this. It is very inspiring and will keep us moving forward. Would you like to receive the same or even better results that our students are getting? If so, join them at organduo.lt slash total dash organist. And of course, you will get the first month free too. You can cancel anytime. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to receive free updates of this blog, make sure you do that at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video, how to master any organ composition and... 10 day organ playing mini course. This was Vidas and Osha from Secrets of Organ Playing. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen.